Speaking of the Colorado, so, yeah, I was talking <laughs> to a few guys a couple days ago. So I think um, uh, what, what we're talking about doing, um, and this is completely independent of anything that you two might want to do. So don't feel obligated, obviously. I don't know why you would. But anyway, uh, I was thinking like the first week that I'm out of probation, I think we're going to rent a really big house. And uh, it'll be like a group of guys. Like um, there's two or three or four guys from the $50 patron uh, discord that uh, I've invited. And um, Chiz and uh, Scum and uh, Fish and uh, Dirty and uh, a few, few few other guys. Uh, we're going to get a really big house in uh, Colorado, like a six, seven bedroom. Because you can get like essentially a mansion for, I don't know, roughly 500 to to $1,000 a night. Mm-hmm. But when you split that six ways, it's not so bad to do like a week-long vacation. Yeah. and uh, And you're staying in like... I mean, really impressive mansions. Like, Show like, those pictures. Like the kitchen in that place, that would be fun to cook in. Like, yeah. Have and things. That'd be fun. One of them had a kitchen, like a restaurant, yeah. like, like like the way the, the ovens were and like the prep tables and everything. And uh, one of them had uh, a pool that's bigger than my house with like three attached hot tubs. Um, one of them's up on a mountaintop with like these ridiculous views and it's near some sort of ski resort. In any case, uh, like, like the idea is that we'll do like a, a group thing for like a week, you know, mm-hmm. with like, like I said, somewhere between five and 10 guys, depending That'd on fun, yeah. how many people want to go. You're obviously both invited, but you know, if you don't want to come, it's not a big be deal. A ton of fun. And with that many people, it'd be a guarantee that someone would go skiing with me. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, absolutely. Like, like someone Maybe will go skiing. It's October with though. Is skiing, uh, is it, is that, it's the wrong I know month, here right? in Georgia, they, they, they spray the um, fake snow. Like like in 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 the in the North Georgia mountains here, where we have like there's a ski resort up there. They just spray fake snow. So. The East Coast is like mostly aren't they call it man made snow, but um it does have to be cold, and it's an investment yeah. for them, so they don't want to blow it if it's inclined to get warm again. Well, Good point. Fuck. Well, luckily for you, I'm staying for at least five weeks. Um, oh, damn. Cause, <laughs> Cause I'm going to do a week with them where we all like split this big place. But I'm like, just so you know, boys, I'm not going home after the week's <laughs> up. I'm going to move to a, 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 a different place. And however many of you want to come with me, like we can work that out. I know Chiz will. Chiz is always down for like a, how long you want to stay? Three, four months, something like that. <laughs> like, cool. All right. All right. Um, so like, like I'm going to get a more like reasonably priced, like monthly uh, rental uh, mm-hmm. And do like a month yeah, after the first week at a place that's like, you know, when you do like monthly rentals on Airbnb, it's much cheaper than going night to night. Like I, I never knew that in the past because I've never stayed for that long. But a pl- for if you do like night to night, then a 250 to $350 a night place is okay. It's like, all right, that'll work. That'll do. It's it's not a mansion, but it's got everything I need and it's comfortable and the TV is a, de- a decent size good internet, et cetera. But when you go monthly, all of a sudden 200 a night is insane. Yeah, like six grand a month. It is six grand. So like that, so most of the ones that I'm looking at for like a monthly rental, it's like two grand a month or 2,200 a month, something like that, like in that price range. And still like, like for, for 2,500 a month, you're getting about the same amount of place as you normally get when you go nightly for 250, 300. It's it's like a two to three bedroom, with nice appliances, good internet, a, a nice big TV, a, a decent living room, and you're not in like some scary ass neighborhood. I don't even know that there are scary neighborhoods in Colorado. I wonder why that is. So, I I, Kyle, I, I'll, I'll, I'll say I need to finish my thought. I, I want to go on this trip. I'm excited about it. I have a request, and I'm not sure if it makes me an asshole. We'll play magic. I want my own room. Of and, course. And I will pay if two people would have fit in that room, I'll pay double, right? That's that's a thing. But I sleep with the CPAP and I I want my own room. Look, I want my own room too. And and like that's one of the things I was saying to the guys when we were like looking at potential houses. I'm like, look, boys, this one happens to have like four king size beds and then two extra bedrooms, each of which have double beds in them. Now look, I'm gonna have one of those king size beds. If we pick this place, one of those is mine. Now, if there are four of you who are okay paying full price for a shared room, that's your decision. But speak up now if you're not, and we'll just find a place that has rooms with full-size beds. 
that's why like I'm I'm leaning toward this one place in particular that has I think six king bedrooms, like like individual bedrooms, three living rooms, and like uh um like like a downstairs game room. Like the, yeah, I, I don't I, I'm on. I want to sign with Woody as well. I would. I do not want to share a room. Yeah, everybody wants their own room. I want. I, I'll. I go one step further. I want my own bathroom. Oh, my own house oh. across the way. Yeah. Why don't you guys <laughs> <laughs> I will undercut your party. Hager is the real fun parties happening at Taylor's house tonight, and everyone but Kyle's invited. Free <laughs> weed over here, guys. <laughs> I were Domino's. Are any of you worried about your? You said you're having a, your patrons come. Are any of you worried about being murdered? No, no. I like the these fun. guys. No, um, not even a little bit. Not well, even. First of all, thing. first of all, I I will say this. It's not an open invite to any and all fifty dollars patrons. It's it's like uh, like three or four of them that I've spent hours and hours and hours with, and like I know these guys, and I know like what their home life is like. I know their access to weaponry, et cetera. Like like I know their <laughs> criminal records and stuff. And it's like, all right, these guys are chill. These guys are cool. Uh, okay. They mean us no harm. They'll be they'll be all good. Um, like I said, guys like fish and. Well, maybe the meanest no harm thing doesn't quite fit dirty. Um, a couple guys were like, "We're like, look dirty. This one's got a big backyard in case you want to get your orbital bone caved in." <laughs> <laughs> Dick doesn't know about like you know none of you i'm happy to go none of you guys have any kind of weird feelings about your dad like wanting to murder <laughs> him or anything like that, right? Okay, good, great. One of the Patreons, Dick. His name, the his name is Dirty. <laughs> he said he wants to kick and um, but he. He can't, Dick. He he's like five eight. He's fifty pounds smaller than me, and uh, like I don't I don't need to call him like Mister. But it, look, we're we're in different weight classes, and he's, he's a never giant, he's a small. <laughs> 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 and uh, I didn't like, know this dirty. I didn't do this. You <laughs> you saw how I how I framed things, right? It was in a nice little fun. Ha <laughs> ha! If you want to do this than that, now you're now now you're being called. A boy manlet. Oh like, my god, <laughs> you're right. Not, I didn't, not I didn't. Woody's saying, "Dirty is a new boy manlet." I do. I follow I'll, Dick's I'll lead. I'll pop his butthole cherry <laughs> if I feel like it. <laughs> I don't mean quote to say any Woody. of Direct that. Direct quote from Woody. You know, <laughs> that's not what I'm going. If, Here's if, what I, I thought about this. I had Dick. Woody, your dick is like a movie screen. <laughs> and dick is like, I love you, uh, you know, a handheld video game. <laughs> this is what Dirty <laughs> should do. <laughs> dirty should grapple first. And before we add striking, right? If he really wants to do this for some reason, we should grapple. And then he'll have an opportunity to change his mind, right? Because I think what he'll find if we were to do that is he'd be like, oh, no, I thought Woody was like a frail old man and, and cooked. And, and this isn't what I thought at all. This is like wrestling a tree stump. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and I, I, I take, I don't want to anymore. And I'll be like, cool, yeah. You know what? You're making good decisions. And so, then you're gonna thump him on the forehead and go. But guess who's buying no. my magic starter deck? <laughs> no, no. You're gonna buy it. <laughs> yeah, right. I, I, a tree stump. That's what I. That's what. Uh, that's what I tell my girlfriend. Just pull, grab that thing like you're trying to pull. Up. Oh, come on. <laughs> yeah. No, but like I. I don't know. It, it, I don't look like much on camera because I don't have big biceps or anything. But I really am big from like armpits to feet, and uh, and I think he'd notice the difference, right? As soon as you lock and like one guy goes to impose their will and the other guy goes, he he'd notice. And uh, um, then you start kissing. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I didn't want to say Everybody's it out loud, friends. but yeah, yeah. <laughs> if, no, he, if Woody wants, there will be kissing. <laughs> if Woody wants, there will be mutual tongue. <laughs> The only thing keeping Woody's out of dirty's is Woody's <laughs> own sense of responsibility. You know, as an internet personality. You guys are going so much harder than me. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's why it's funny. You've got a tattoo, <laughs> you have to tattoo a picture like dirty. of your family on your ass so that if he's about to enter you unwillingly, Woody, he will pro possibly lose his erection at the last <laughs> That's not my biggest concern. Dirty, no. I'll challenge you. If dirty shows to it, up I'll for the fight. Him. Dirty shows up to fight, and he already has one of those female condoms in. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, bring your diaphragm, bitch. 
He's got, ha I got a dental dam shoved in my ass. <laughs> I didn't expect your, this coming. Uh, oh, this bring, is some Sun Tzu shit. He's controlling you gotta the battle. bring your spermicidal lube, because you're about to get knocked up. <laughs> Yeah, yeah no, I, uh, I, I, it's is he just goofing? He's goofing, right? So, like, what what it actually is is he's interested in like having like a friendly little boxing bat match with you and like touching gloves and like 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 dancing around and boxing, like doing something I, kind of fun like that. So that's not what he he said he was going to kick my ass, and then I was old and like he he hurt my feelings, and and I was like. Well, mission accomplished. Yes. <laughs> mission accomplished. <laughs> um, you know, like, like <laughs> you win round one. Dirty. Round one. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god, this I, I guy dirty. Like. He's smart. <laughs> and like, if we were on Xbox Live, just like, I don't know, throwing insults, he would beat me every time. He's very good at that. Yeah, I, I think what it is is like, like, um, when I talk to Dirty a lot, you know, I'm in I'm in chats with him. I play a lot of poker with him and and other games, and like like we really like talk each other a lot. And uh, and I think that he sort of transferred that sort of like familiarity that he has with maybe me over to you, and like, and maybe that's why he came off as so rude because he he's he's equally rude to me, but it's in a real I don't know we know each other a little bit better. Then, because you don't know him at all. I mean, you know him a little bit because you see him like once a month for a couple of hours. Mm -hmm. But like, I see him that much almost every night, or at least you know three nights a week or something. So I think maybe that is part of it. And he's just kind of you know he can be kind of abrasive. That's kind of his personality. But it's it's a lovable kind of abrasiveness. Like, I like the guy. I I, I like him too. I when mean, I invited him on a vacation a, with me. He shows so. up at the party house. Kyle, you need to make him stand on the front porch, like Fight Club with his bag next to him, and you come out and like, <laughs> too small! Get the fuck off my porch! Get the fuck off my porch! And he stands there. <laughs> yeah, that, that's, how, that's how you gain entry to the party house. Yeah, yeah you, 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 you get <laughs> torn down and told to wait. <laughs> the tits are too big! <laughs> and then he starts walking away and he, no, no, come on, come, on. come, come back, Meatloaf. Don't bitch out right away. Jesus Christ. Come on, Meatball. Get back. Dude, meatloaf in that movie is a character that like I felt so bad for. Like the whole time. Oh, right. That's like, Meatloaf playing that guy. I forgot yeah, that. Meatloaf playing the guy. Like when when uh, oh, Edward Norton the like, like, oh, I'm crying into Meatballs, Meatloaf's big sweaty tits in the beginning and their testicular cancer summit or whatever. Yeah. Testic seen that movie testicular movie. cancer survivors. Yeah, that's the other thing I really want to do. Like, I know, like, my thing is movies, and it's not, it might sound stupid or like I've got some kind of a drug problem, but like, I can't enjoy <laughs> movies without being high. Like, like one of my favorite things. <laughs> like, I really can't enjoy movies anymore. I haven't been able to, and it like since I've been sober, and like, 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 it's like, been I, years. I, it's been years. Like, like I'll because they're just not as entertaining to me like like i can't yeah. i it, i can't relax enough to like really enjoy the movie like i'm too scatterbrained like i'll be watching the movie and i'll be then all of a sudden i'm on my phone or i'm like wanting to go do something else in the house or like wanting to like go I, i'm watching the movie and i'm like oh, i should go wash those dishes and then i'm now i'm washing dishes or something like that and so it's like but we were gonna watch a shitty movie like, like what happened here like, like i can't i can't like so I, I want to watch a bunch of movies while I'm there. There's a bunch of them that I've been saving up that I haven't watched yet and a bunch of old ones that I want to rewatch. Um, I watch a lot of Red Letter Media, uh, their YouTube channel. It's my favorite YouTube channel. And uh, I like their, their series Best of the Worst, where they pick just literally the worst movies you can imagine. Like, you can't, frankly, imagine movies as bad as the movies that they watch on Best of the Worst. Like like 70s C movies, like movies that are like a porn director's first try at making a legitimate <laughs> film. Stuff like yeah. literally that that that's an that's example. That's a real example. Okay. That's a real example. And and he's got like his porn actors in it trying to like do a real movie. Um mm. uh, I was watching one the other night where the girl is delivering her lines in such a way that they're like she sounds like Siri. She's like I don't know if that is the way to go, but maybe if we all work together we can get out of this one. And I'm just like, is she doing a Siri impression? She's like got no personality. Just worst actors, worst special effects. Like, but that shit's really funny if you're fucking star. Yeah. I'll, I'll watch as many shitty movies as these you want. I like those old horror movies and stuff like that. So yeah, like I like like one of the things I want to do is just smoke a lot of weed. Uh, I want to cook for everyone. I'd like to do like a, a big cookout and cook everybody's steaks and stuff. 
and uh, uh, but I, I want to watch a lot of movies. But I would be down to do some more activities in the real world than we have traditionally done. I was telling everybody the story last night of when uh, me and Chiz uh, invited Taylor on to one of our classic uh, Colorado getaways, and mm-hmm. and, and he's like, he, he Taylor shows him. He's like, all right, guys, so. We go skiing, or maybe we could go hit some balls at the driving range, or you want to do this or that. And, and Chiz and I just look at him like, you know what this is. <laughs> you were told what this is. We smoke weed. We I watch TV. We order food. <laughs> Those are things. <laughs> that was then it, we though. do that again. <clears throat> Rinse, repeat, maybe some sleep. That's you know what how we do. You go on vacation to the beach with someone and they're like, I'm more of a beach relaxation person. I'm more like this. It's like I'd rather just go to the beach and read a book and chill. But like <clears> still, <throat> after a couple days of that, you're like, okay, let's let's go do we gotta do something. I gotta get moving. No, it was like day four, and like we made it, Dick, to a restaurant. This was the furthest I dragged these fuckers away from it. We made it to a restaurant. And I'm like walking up to the maitre d' area to be like, table for four and wait. And before we even get there, Kyle and Chiz are like, too long of a wait. Let's bounce. And I'm like, like, but but just let me check. Let me check. So we're already here. We're already here. We just gave the car to the valet. It'll it'll take him a minute to loop around anyway. What it really was is I was having like a minor anxiety attack. Like that <laughs> restaurant was so crowded and loud. It was like borderline like nightclub. So you didn't no, want to like, be in there. Even if the wait was five minutes, it just wasn't. Your I, scene. I wanted out. Like I didn't yeah. want to, even, I didn't, I, I was, gl- I was glad that it looked like it was going to be a wait because like, I wanted out like, like, like we picked it because the menu looked so good. The like, menu looked right. great and it smelled great, but it was so busy and loud that I was feeling really anxious. And I felt like we were underdressed for the place. Like, like it seemed like really fancy, we like a- underdressed, but like I was, and I don't like that. I was stoned to shit. I was so hungry. I was like, I was devastated when we, when we left. I, I felt like, we I felt have- like I needed a fucking suit jacket to sit down in that place. And we were showing up and like, I, I may have been the best dressed and I felt underdressed. I'll just say that. Um, you know, some of us were wearing hoodies uh, some of us were in sweatpants and shit and, uh, and, and like fucking sneakers. And I was just like, man, I don't want people to judge me. I'm too high to be judged right now. So and this place is instead? too loud and too busy. <laughs> if it had been like an Outback Steakhouse and it had been equally busy, I think I'd have been okay. But like <laughs> if this was a fancy restaurant. Um, I mean, don't, don't, this, we weren't about to be like cooked for by Bobby Flay or anything. Don't think that. But like, Dinner was going to cost four hundred dollars. It was, oh, it it was that I mean, kind like, of restaurant. You, were, oh, like, you and I were wearing like Wait. jeans and, and like you know a jacket or something. Not not a not a nice jacket, just a fucking like North Face jacket. Like, yeah, like a leather jacket or something. Yeah, just wearing like a hoodie and sweatpants, like total relaxation mode. And yeah, to be fair, I do remember walking up to the Mater D, looking to the left, and seeing a lot of high top bar tables with people in like dresses. Yeah, and but like they wouldn't have kicked us out. They would have thought. Oh, who cares? Oh, we're we're these Silicon Valley hoodlums coming into our restaurant. We should serve yes. them with. I just felt so. I, I felt uncomfortably out of place. I, I felt underdressed. I felt it was way too busy and loud. And uh, and I was I was high, of course. So did you go to a more appropriate restaurant? What was I think the we next went home step? and ordered food. No, they went back home and we ordered food. And, and it was like yeah. Wendy's. And was when open. we walked back home, it was like. The, the level of like relief that washed <laughs> over me, like, like it was like, it was like when I got released from jail that first day, like not prison, but jail. And it was just like, thank God I'm out of jail. Thank God I'm oh. in my dad's truck being driven back to my house and no <laughs> one is mad at me. No one's judging me. No one's disappointed with me that, you know, this is, this is wondrous. Like, yeah. like this feels so good. Taylor, what were you loved. doing to him? It, it was maybe like literally we had dropped. It was at a hotel like lobby, like nice steakhouse. Drop off the rental car. Kyle hands the keys to the guy, whips it back to, to park it. We are inside for maybe seven seconds before they're like, we got to go. And so then we have to go back out there and be like, hey, that guy who's like still visible with the car, whip him back, bring him back around. I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. I was having I was having a minor anxiety attack. I, I felt so uncomfortable. Um, in, in, in for all the reasons I said, the, the yeah. being underdressed, the um, 
the just how busy and like hopping the place was like like it, it was like a like i said it was a bit of a mixture so, between because we were standing kind of by a bar mm -hmm. but there was like a major d and then there's i can see into the restaurant just how like like i wouldn't have been that underdressed to go to a morton's and this place or a fleming's uh or a ruth's chris and this mm -hmm. place was like a step above those places and I, I i was not happy did the pot contribute to your feelings? Like, I, I just know pot does paranoia. The opposite. Like, he's not describing paranoia, but he is describing an uneasiness. Honestly, if I had been sober, it would have been so much worse. Okay. Like, 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 like the, the pot is the only thing that kept me there for a full seven seconds. <laughs> <laughs> we needed to get him higher, Taylor. I thought you would have had to get me like blackout on edibles high where I didn't even know where I fucking was. This is like how they got Mr. T to fly on the A team. They're gonna have to <laughs> <laughs> We're, out, wait. We're in Flemings. Just relax. We're in Flemings. I, just pretty severe pipe burst in my basement and flooded my whole basement. Bunch of fucking disaster. It's gonna be uh it's gonna be a good bit, good bit of time to fix and everything. The last couple of days people have been tearing stuff out and carrying it. Everybody was removing a bunch of drywall. They removed an entire ceiling from a room like down there. And like they plugged in like 12 industrial strength dehumidifiers. And like, even in my head, I am not an electrician. Like I walked down there and saw, and I'm like, this is dangerous. Like there should not be like nine of these to an outlet. And like, maybe with like, as I'm thinking that it bursts the circuit and shuts down, they've just left. And so then I have to go and I don't know anything about that. And I'm fucking around with the breakers and like trying to run on cords and stuff down there. I have to leave those right. It is. I, it sounds like an airplane's taking off underneath me right now. It is so goddamn. They're running right now. It, They're running right now. They it's have been to run two days. From, yeah, it's been oh. two days. A guy came out and checked today and was like, the moisture meter is way too high. We got to keep them running. And so it'll be like 72 hours at the time yep. tomorrow they come to check. It is so fucking loud in my house. It is <laughs> 12 of these. And the, the way it is, you know, my stairs just go down into the, the couple basement rooms I have. And I can't close those doors. I have to leave them open for some can, air circulation thing. Can I interrupt you? Did we yeah. set this up or am I create? Do, do people know that a pipe burst in your basement two days ago? Did we say that out loud? I, yeah. I said that to, to begin. Yeah. The, oh, just okay. that it, it burst. Basically, uh, the guy and, just showed me a picture of the pipe and was like, ah, here's the problem. And it was like a pipe totally shorn in two, just pouring stuff. And uh, so I, I, I think it had only you, been going for a couple hours when I caught it. Thank God. But a couple hours is horrible because it's enough time to ruin it's, everything but it was it's a couple thousand gallons at that point like like, like oh yeah i've dealt with this so many times like, like my dad's farm like it's been stressing me out dude I'm sorry. my dad's farm in those poultry houses there's like i don't want to exaggerate so let me quickly do the math in my head it's 5 10 15 20 times 6 um 500 2000 6 6 times 2000 is 12000 Everyone's being very respectful. It's Kyle two and a half happen. miles of PVC. Okay. There's two and a half miles of indoor wow. PVC. Okay. And a lot of it is C PVC. And I'm not going to get into the details of the difference, but it gets brittle over time. And so like that shit will just like snap and break. And there's always like strangers in there working who, who are like rough with your equipment that are higher that it, it, I won't go into it, but there's people in there fucking working who don't give a fuck if they break something and you never know if they've cracked a thing and it's just almost about to fall apart. And then like three weeks later pop. And so, so many floods I've seen in, in indoors, like, this like is the first tens, like 10,000 gallons. And it sucks that it was in my fucking house, but like it, like just by happenstance at like 2 PM, I happened to be like, Oh, I'm, I'm going to check downstairs. If I have something, and I went down there and I'm in my unfinished area. I open it and there's just water fucking all over the place, not covered. Cause it's a very, very large unfinished area, but it's like, there's enough water in the lower leveling parts that I could go splash around. Like if I wanted to, and like, you know, where like you kick a really deep puddle and like you feel the amount of inertia of the water you're moving. It's spilling over the sides of your boot too. Like it's that kind of, um, not good. And I'm like, ah, oh, well, this is, this is bad news. And so I, I go to the finished part of my basement and I'm like, hopefully, you know, the finished part that has, you know, drywall and fucking my TV, my pool table, my sectional, all my shit, maybe that's okay. And I walk in and it's like, you ever seen the movie like the money trap or like it, it looked like there was there was water pouring out of all the light fixtures there was a center like uh there was a center area where like the the vent was to like heat it and like it was just one of the pouring out of that and i just was like oh sprinted turn around turn the water off 
run upstairs, grab a bunch of buckets, start putting it under all of these light fixtures. I call around uh, to five or six different plumbing emergency companies. It's minus four degrees in St. Louis at the time. And so every one of them is like, yeah, we don't have any plumbers. Everybody's doing exactly what you're calling to do. Eventually I get through to someone and they come out and start getting moving. But like it was, uh, it, it's going to take so much fucking time for them to fix all this shit. Just a pain in the ass. So what if at least you have insurance yeah. though. Can you imagine yeah, if this weren't insured? Because I, I don't know if they've given you an estimate, but I just based on what you've described, I think you've got like, Fifteen to twenty thousand dollars for the damages. I, I would guess at least like probably around fifteen. I and want so, a yeah. Twitch donation a goal man. where you're willing to walk downstairs and show off the damage. <laughs> you should do <laughs> yeah, that for a thousand dollars. For a thousand dollars, I will go downstairs with my laptop and I will show everything. <laughs> I, oh, some someone would like be like uh, using the the floor plan of his house. Here's his address. So, exactly. <laughs> oh, right, right, right. Right. Yeah. 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 That's, yeah. would, uh, that is a risk. So the way I would infiltrate Taylor's home for murder is... <laughs> All right. Yeah. I do see the flaws in these You can ideas. see here, once you get him in this pool room, there's no escape. There's no escape. <laughs> like, one <laughs> way in, one way out. Classic, <laughs> classic flaw. It would go yeah. towards the deductible, though. I, I had never seen, like, that level of damage so fast. Where, like, with it felt, it felt like the time... From me turning off the water, running upstairs, grabbing the buckets, and then coming back down, like pieces of the ceiling, it just started like just bowing out at the, the areas where they put the drywall together or the ceiling together, whatever. So fucking pain in the ass. You've said yeah, that I, your house is very loud. And I in my head, all the humidifiers are in the basement. Am I right? Yeah. So I I, I live in a ranch style house. So mm -hmm. like large upper floor and then basement. There's not two stories. And so like over on Wilk Street. Yeah, over on Wilk <laughs> Street. In St. Louis. And uh, so basically, like, my, my living room, you come into my house, it's an open, like, feel to it. And, you you know, you go down the stairs and immediately a left, you're in my finished area, right, you're in my gym, unfinished area where I have my hockey shooting stuff. Now, because it's just an open stairway down there and both those doors have to be open and in each of those rooms, there's six industrial-sized dehumidifiers, I, I can hear it right now. I can hear the thrall, the... Right now, through the wall, through the doors, down the stairs. You, I, I can. I was sitting with my 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 ex girlfriend on the couch last night trying to. Watch <laughs> I love something. that. Yeah, we were trying to watch something, and she was like, "I can't handle this. It is so loud in here." And and something else that it did. It's dehumidifying the whole house. So I got a nosebleed this morning. Wow. It's, just, it's so dry in here, and it's still not doing anything. Uh, all my carpet was destroyed. There was one area of my carpet that like matched my stairs. And I was like, do you think we'll be able to save this like bottom patch? So I don't have to try and match carpet. And the guy's like, I'll do my best, bro. And then the guy came out today and I asked him about it and was like, there is, I don't know who told you this was salvageable. <laughs> uh, probably the guy who comes on day one and gets your hopes up. <laughs> I'm day two guy. I'm real deal guy. I'm oh, that was High you. Hopes Harry. He probably <laughs> told you you weren't going to need new new walls, too, didn't he? <laughs> I, I, had, uh, I, had, I had like a big St. Louis Blues fat head that I put up two weeks ago that my dad got me for Christmas. Like, I'll, I'll finally put that up by the pool table. And like the guy was like cutting out all the pieces of drywall and he like leaves that up there. And he's like, we'll see if we can, we'll see if we can salvage this. And I'm like, I'm like, what are you? T it's it's done. It's done. <laughs> what like, is a fat head? Like, it's, it's like a Do big like St. Louis Blues logo that sticks there on the wall, or you can get them of different sports teams. They look yeah, nice. Every up sports in the team. It's room. a big every sticker you put on a wall. Big giant sticker. Yeah, that, yeah. that goes on the wall. Usually it's in like super a, popular. Yeah, yeah, very popular. And just the way this guy was like sawing around it. And it's like, dude. It, first Correct. of all, if I think I'm pretty sure if I have to peel this off, I have to throw it away anyway. Second of all. It, that fat head is not going to provide the structural support needed to keep this wall in place. Like just so I, I have the this side of ripping it all out and replace it is what I say. I have this thing, Taylor, like my welder has a very loud sound to it. I bet it's not too far from the humidifier and it just increases my stress level. Like it, it I don't, everything about it running makes me like, I don't anxiety is not the right term, but it's just, it, it weighs on me. I hate it. And the second I flip that switch off, it's like, it's relaxation. Yeah. yeah. Does that happen? Are those humidifiers I'm, doing that to you? They're are stressing you me out, man. Yeah. They, they are so goddamn loud. I could hear them when I was trying to sleep last night. It's, it, it is. It's like you're, it's like the sound of a jet beginning to turn on. Just down there. I can fucking hear it. 
And I'm going to go out and try and watch an episode of The Expanse after this. And I won't be able to focus because I'll be annoyed. And then I'll overeat. <laughs> uh, you guys yeah, I had the exact same thing happen. My, my basement flooded and the the all of the flooring had to be ripped up. It was like five. I don't even remember how much the flooring cost to begin with, but it was hardwood flooring. It was if you watch the the F, the boot camp I did with wings that that hardwood floor that he's being like pulled that w- he's pulling Jeremy across, like that all had to be taken up, and that w- that hardwood was glued down to concrete. So like <laughs> these two guys had to run like these giant like scrapers to like get under it and then prize it up. And every time they prized, the boards would just splinter into all these. They, they would they wouldn't come up in like even sheets because like they they were so glued mm-hmm. down. They were just splintering up. It it was thousands of dollars just to get that done, and then running the dehumidifier for a long time, like a whole week. And I'd go down there like every couple of hours and dump out you know three or four gallons of water. It was just shocking how fast it yeah. was pulling moisture out of the air. Yeah, well, I believe they're drying it out, but like, even like the area of carpet, it's dried out. Now it's just like crispy and rotten. Yeah, like, it's ruined. Not, yeah, it, it's destroyed. So, so, do you have an ETA on how much longer they're going to run? Uh, the guy who came out today was like, "We're going to run it at least until tomorrow afternoon." And oh, so, like, okay. it's not forever. Like that. No, it, at that point, it'll just be like three straight days of it, which is annoying. But so, what he mentioned, what he mentioned, how like the noise of his his welder was like this added stress where once it's off, it's like, oh, now it's yeah. peaceful times. Are there any noises like that for you that it's like, ah, oh, I really like having that that turned on. That's- I like a fan when I'm trying to sleep. Yeah. I like a fan. You know what? I had a, uh, I, I thought I was going crazy uh, at one point in, I moved from Hollywood, which was just noise all the time, like helicopters while you're trying to sleep, uh, mm-hmm. neighbors, Screaming, beating the hell out of each other, throwing their throwing their belongings down the stairs, down the firewall, um, uh, down the stairwell. Uh, so I was used to it. And then I moved out here into the into the suburbs, into the country, and it was a huge adjustment getting used to listening to the blood, uh, like go around in your skull yeah. while you're trying. To- <laughs> You know, like that yeah. was what was keeping me up at night. And then I finally got used to it. And then one day, I just started hearing this this uh, this high pitched like sound and i thought it was tinnitus because Uh-oh. i've always dealt i've always dealt with that a little bit it will come and go it's always the same key uh i got it from playing music all my life like just being really close to the piano shredding your eardrums whatever like i know where i know how i got it uh, and i thought it was that forever and i thought okay well i just have i just have mm-hmm. tinnitus now and i'm gonna kill myself in a couple of years like no no <laughs> no problem uh, i hope to see some enemies die before then but if not no big deal i deserve it um and then one day, like after weeks of this, I just snapped and started tearing out everything, every electronic thing in my house, TVs, speakers, everything, phone. I'm prying like things open to pull the batteries out of it. And I get halfway through. Can I, I get halfway through the kit? Go ahead. Was it a charging device? Bro, it was a fuck. It was an electric kettle. It was an electric like <laughs> Tea that I don't yeah, I drink. <laughs> I, don't I don't drink it. It was an electric <laughs> kettle that was j- that it wasn't even on. It was just plugged in, wedged behind my popcorn maker. Uh, that I don't know why. It was, I don't know why it was permanently plugged in for her sleepy time tea that she got to help me sleep. I unplugged it. I unplugged it, and it felt like like I. I in that moment, when I unplugged it, it felt like a, it felt like the Big Bang was happening in my brain. Like there was absolutely nothing. There was like, like oh, God, it's gone. That one and that, like and still to this day, she'll leave it plugged in, and I'll, I'll like I'll feel myself start going a little bit insane, like getting a little bit of twitching. I'm like, no, no, it's the, it's the water, it's the kettle, it's the kettle. I don't get up, walk over there. As the closer I get, sure enough, like it's finding this e sound. It was. It's so hard to explain how impossible it was to locate. Does it she was not so notice high. it? Does she no. Can't hear? Oh, so every time I talked <laughs> about it, she's like, "I don't hear anything." I'm like, "No, you don't." I don't know if like, and it hurts. It hurt my ear a little bit because, like, I assume because of the tinnitus damage, it would always make me go like, ah, "I can't." And I don't know about you guys, but like, I can hear that frequency that they play out front of Seven Eleven to get kids to stop hanging oh. around there. Like, do you know that that frequency? Yeah. 
I can when there's when it's going, I feel like sick. And it was like that same. It was like I built in that thing that makes kids sick in my house. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it was the best feeling I can, they can build they can wake 7 a.m start running the bandsaws next door build that balcony yeah don't care I'll just tune it out but that for for weeks for weeks it was it was maddening um it was my telltale heart but it's gone now and I kept the kettle for some reason I don't know why I even kept it. I should have just thrown it away. It's like fifteen dollars on Amazon. I don't know why I did this. Well, this is the rant of a man who is not on the verge of a proposal. How did your high school crush turn out as an adult? Anybody know? I have no idea. I don't know how she's in. doing now. Um, she, you know, she was doing fine as of a few years ago. Yeah, my last time I heard she was doing okay. Yeah, well, died not many years. Of course, I don't pay her rent anymore, so I don't know how things are going since then. Uh, she's lost some income. <laughs> <laughs> lost some income since uh, since I got the boot. I'm sure she's doing fine. My yeah, high school probably. girlfriend, who I used as, to answer the question, um, I had all these long term girlfriends in high school, so I didn't like crush. How long were you in high school? <laughs> <laughs> it was like I had like one girlfriend a year, mostly uh, towards the end. Anyway, uh, yeah. She married a guy. He was a networking engineer and moved to Arizona. So just did fine, I guess. Stable life. How about you, Dick? I have multiple levels of security to make sure I never find out and I'm never able to drunkenly Google any ex-girlfriend. I put them into a, a hand, I send them to a special service and they blank out the internet for me. I've got a box outside to prevent me from contacting any of them. Yeah, uh, right? I uh, I only know one. I only talk. I only speak with one ex. Uh, she's she's got a kid. She's doing great. Um, I, I hope uh, my high school girlfriend still has that amazing pair of tits. Um, but amazing. I don't know. I've never looked. Never. That's I've never even thought to look. Actually. Yeah. I. Uh, y you know how like you ever be like using a a piece of machinery, a chainsaw, or maybe your uh, the 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 burner of an oven. Uh, or a stove, or you know something dangerous, or maybe I hate to say it, but you've got a gun, and and the the thought crosses your head like, what if I just stuck my hand in this blender, or like, what if I just shot myself through the palm, I'm like like, like yeah, or, yeah. or like, what if I just jumped into that in front of that car, or I swerved in front of that semi truck. <laughs> the other night I was like, what if I just Google my ex girlfriend? I was like, oh, what the fuck? What are you doing? <laughs> what the fuck are you thinking? Oh, fuck. Are you insane? Why would you have big thoughts game? like this? Do, do I need medication? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, what what were you doing when you had that thought? I was just watching television and, and it just occurred to me like, hey, I could Google her. And then immediately it was that same thought process of like swerving in from the semi truck. It was like, God damn it. Keep a hold on things. What if that part of our brain had a, had a split second longer of control? <laughs> like like that, you, that, that, that. What would weird you hope to little... gain from it? Like oh, in, in the I, moment, what was your thought like? There'd be nothing to gain happen. from it. There'd be nothing to gain. Just curiosity, I suppose. But like, yeah. there's nothing to gain from there because like, she's not going. I, I it, 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 there's no. nothing to gain. Doing <laughs> <laughs> horrible, I'd hate it. If she's doing great, I would hate it. If she's doing middle of the road, like, there's nothing good that I. That to like, like, yeah. he looked her up and she was just dead. So what's the story that it, 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 did you leave on right. bad right. terms? Did you? <laughs> is she is so addictive that it it's like heroin and you don't want to? Oh, it try was bad it? terms. Bad terms. Oh, okay. Bad terms. You know, it was bad terms. Was the pussy <laughs> too good? Things went poorly at the end, Woody. Okay. Okay. Was it an explosion at the end, or was it like a six months of? Fuck, we both it was, know where we're going. There was, um, it was like one of those explosions that's so big it lasts for like a few hours. Like, 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 like just a, you know, you know, in like when you see nuclear weapons go off in yeah. movies and it's not just like boom, it's like and everything's being destroyed and there's that rolling wa pressure the wave. The, the trees go and all the leaves are blown off when they like swing back into frame. Yeah, like houses just turn into up. matchsticks. Yeah, you know, I, uh, I did, I did something stupid and uh, it didn't end well. And, and uh, my so, so, uh, <laughs> high school girlfriend. So we just went to different colleges. That's why we really broke up. I had oh, how idea. sweet. <laughs> I had the that idea 
I, I like went to meet her and see her again over Thanksgiving. And I kind of knew that like it was over. So I was like, what we'll do is we'll have sex repeatedly and then we'll break up at the end of the weekend. She had a similar idea. We'll break up at the beginning of the weekend. <laughs> and then I'll go have sex not repeatedly. <laughs> so we I'm just not tell her that there's nothing in it for her. <laughs> so we hung out all weekend as friends, Ooh, not having wow. sex. We did hook up, actually. I kissed and maybe I felt a boob or something. But, uh, um, but you'd already fucked her. And so that wasn't well, fun. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it wasn't what I had in mind, but I actually had a decent weekend. I liked, like, we had a good time hanging out, but we just knew that I lived in New Jersey and she lived in Texas now, and, like, that was that. that what part so Texas? Um, She's probably cool. Austin, I think. It's a nice place. Yeah. She watched those eyes walk away. She watched those calves walk right out of her lap. <laughs> oh, <yeah>. She did. <laughs> Probably leaning against the door. I'll never see those. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Calf what do these calves look like? Like a human heart. Nick, what's the, the worst injury you've ever had? Uh, my high school girlfriend broke my heart. Uh, oh, oh, oh my God. <laughs> no more. Did he take that pill where he turns into a girl? <laughs> yeah. Sorry. This is the guy who's who's trained himself to do laundry all day. <laughs> Those are uh, machines. I, I broke this tendon. Well, let's let me see. Uh, I broke this collarbone and busted all the teeth out of my head. And when I was a lot Car? younger, teeth out. No, playing baseball. Um, oddly. I dove into an outfielder and his his uh, leg his shin kicked me right in the face and collarbone. So, oh messed. wow, same thing. What broke my collarbone and knocked all the teeth out of my head? But I had braces on, so they were all like held in, kind of in <laughs> yes. place. So they were like yep. pushed in. Um, oh, <laughs> and so I, I woke up and like all of my teeth are kind of half into my head. There's a searing pain in my neck, which was because. The collarbone just the bones just grind on each other. Yeah, um, those don't heal right. No, they do not. not and there's all. all this blood. Um, How did the accident? Will you go for a fly ball, like the same fly ball? Yeah, I called it too. I called it. I'm a loud guy. I know I fucking called it. Um, he I never ended up. I guess. Did he it catch can it? Get confusing. It can like like there's this okay. weird like fighter. I don't know what it is about fly balls. Like like. There's something in our and it's evolutionary evolutionarily. Um, oh God, I'm glad Filthy's not here. That like <laughs> makes you want to like get that ball, and you're like you're already you're already on it. You're like I got it, I got it. And somebody if somebody you're calls you hunt. off of it. There's a little bit of you that wants to be like, just keep going. But you've got to yeah. you gotta fucking go off. Is or, there a priority? Like if I'm playing center field in your left field and I call it, do I outrank you? You get it. Yes. Yeah. If you're coming yeah, there's in, priority, and there's like like the the catcher will often have priority in the infield. Uh, if it's like a pop up, it, it it really it's the guy who calls it, and oftentimes they'll repeat it. I got it. I got it. I got it. I got it. Like because like, I mean you we've probably seen the bloopers from MLB games where like the pitcher, the first baseman, and the catcher are all standing there, and then there's some confusion, and the ball bloop drops between them all, and they and and these jackasses who are making a combined. 80 million a year just fucking like maybe yeah. lost a game because nobody could figure out who wants to catch something a child could have caught. Yeah. That's a well, good one, Dick. That's, Jesus. that's pretty fucked up. Get all your that's teeth knocked out. So, break your collarbone in a baseball. And you oh, know, yeah. the collarbone does not heal back, right? I don't know what yours looks oh. like, but a buddy of mine I played hockey with, he got checked into the boards and it, like he went in too straight and it crunched one of them. And like, mm -hmm. It healed back to where it's like one side of his body's a little bit shorter now and it's like layered. So you can see the normal collarbone, the double thick part. And as he was sitting in the locker room before they even took his pads off, he started turning green because apparently it's so painful and he just vomited all over the place. It is it's extremely painful. Uh, it grows back together crooked. You, you, they just put you in a sling and pretty much anytime you like twist or put your shirt on, it just feels like the insides of your bones grinding together. Ugh. I don't know why they don't fix it better. Like you should can't. most bones. I don't okay. I don't understand why you can't. It, like if if you were to shatter your shin bone in four places, yeah. they would take a bunch of plates and make them kind of splints and reassemble your leg bone to be roughly what it was. 
uh-huh. and then it would grow the rest of the way. But with collarbones, they don't do that. Well, you'd have to cast it. Like you can't cast your, it's like when you break a rib, they can't cast your torso for something like that because you, you're still mostly mobile. And when it grows back together, um, the sides that grow back crooked, they'll they'll migrate to the other side. Like eventually, eventually the uh, it, it'll grow back kind of, you know, 80%, 90% touching. And then the excesses on both sides will wear themselves down over time and migrate to the other side. Like you well, used what to be able to put fall. something like a Chinese finger trap around it and just heal it. And... Be, I think the, that'd be surgery, right? Like cutting yeah, in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What I described got... with the leg was surgery too. Like you bust up your leg badly and it, <clears throat> I don't know if they're called splints, but like the metal plates function as sort of internal splints. And then yeah. they hold it together while the bone reheals. Uh, I, you know, I'm not a doctor. Uh, I, I don't know. I assume they'd have to put you under or something, and then there's just a risk of you dying. Uh, it, after the first huh. week, it wasn't bad, but okay. doing it was doing it was bad. How about you guys? Did Taylor freeze for everybody in the Pledge of Allegiance? Oh, he just yeah, he of did. he's pledging. <laughs> 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 I mean, that guy, I keep thinking that's a guy, a muscle man behind him um, that's about to attack him. <laughs> his, uh, his boxing dummy back there. Yeah, artificial sweetener is, uh, is a magical thing. Yeah, because sugar. 500 years, not even that long, maybe like 100 years from now, you'll be able to have whole treats, whole pizzas, I say, that, that totally calorie free. What do you think the next breakthrough in technology is going to be that's going to be a wow? I hope that... Like, like, is this in the context of food or any tech? Any, you know? any technology, because I think we, we discussed a few months ago or weeks ago, shows ago, um, like what was the last piece of technology that came out when we were like, wow. And I may have said HDTV, like, like, cause I just remember walking into Best Buy for the first time and seeing like a real like 1080p plasma television. And of course they're always playing like something that displays well on it. And the lighting is good in there and the TV section is kind of dim. So the, those TVs are extra bright and just being like, fuck, mm. fuck, this looks so good. And they were eight, $9,000 or whatever. And it's just like, oh my God, but unobtainable. There's <laughs> no way I'm spending $9,000 on like a television. And then it, that to me was the last wow. And then before that, I think it was smartphones. Cause I remember 2005 ish when um, the businessman thing to have like, like, to like do your like the phone the businessman phone to have was the palm pilot the um that's what was it the the, the palm pilot or trail, or a, trail. Yeah, yeah that's exactly it i had it it had a little stylus that came out mm -hmm. and you could you could operate the touch screen it had limited internet connectivity so you could do some like online stuff like you could log into like um it synced um, my calendar really well like that too or, yeah but it, it did huge it didn't act, it didn't have like a fully functional browser. So nope. you didn't have all the knowledge of the internet in your pocket, but you had a few online tools like calendar and email. It was and great because I had all my customer like calendar shit in there. Like I knew who to call on what days. I, I, I could log into like certain um like like car websites and like get do do like background checks on cars and get get all sorts of information. Edmund I had an Edmunds account and all that stuff. It was super. It was super strong. I needed it. It was great. It's gonna be uh, self-driving cars, right? That's my guess for the next big wow thing. Is that already here, or is that not quite? It's. it's I would say. I would say self-driving cars are sixty percent here. Like, like, yeah. like it. What you really want, in my opinion, is that futuristic car where you sit in the driver's seat, voice command or whatever, however you want to input it. You're like, hey, take me to fucking Dallas Fort Worth Airport. Um, let me know when we're 30 minutes out. And then your chair can literally, like your car driver's seat will literally rotate 180 degrees and you're yeah. facing your rear passengers having a face to face conversation like you're on a train or a plane or something. And maybe there's a and like a an table. Airplane. Yeah. So, like, like, like so literally, like, like you could be back there on a laptop, like, like not even giving a fuck about where you're going. I feel I've like self-driving had... car self-driving cars to me fit in a, a category of robot almost, right? So you're right. Self-driving cars are huge. And we all think about how that impacts trucking and stuff. 
But imagine warehouses like self-driving forklifts and those you know, just takes things off the shelf all the way up to the little boxing machine and does it without human intervention. Like these robots that just take it a, a step farther than we're doing right now automate so much and changes the employment scene by so much that that'll be a, like a mankind changing, shifting tech. What do we do about jobs though? Like, like right? that's my big fear with automation. And one side would point out that, hey, when they came up with the word processor in the computer, you know, all those typewriters went out of business. You know, all the typists had to move on to something else, learn a new skill. All those typewriter companies were done for. This is different, though. You didn't replace the typist. You gave them a new instrument. Yeah. They went, it, it, it's, it's like, okay, we went from swords to firearms. We didn't replace our whole army with robot men, though. You mm -hmm. know, we still have we soldiers have out there going to war. The, I mean, I get that there's drones. I get there's drones, but the but there aren't robot men enlisting. There's there's a reason we that, that they're spending so much on those in the army national guard. Mm -hmm. You're here or whatever the fuck. Like, I mean, if you, like, if you made the like, fact that I know like the jingle for our <laughs> fucking armed forces and their and their slogans and their like like like, like their ad sales bullshit. Like goes to show, like like we don't have robot soldiers like taking over our armed forces yet. So I don't think we just swapped tools like you pitched it. Um, I think that people who used to have someone else do their typing for them started doing it themselves. Mm -hmm. that, like that's what word processors brought a lot. Used to be managers didn't even know how to type; they couldn't find the keys, and now they write their own emails. And sure, and the typing sure. pool is gone. Um, I've made this argument before, so I'll say it in, in my fast forward. Long, long time ago, eight people fishing. They all use spears. Someone invents the net. Now that guy is eight times more effective, and we've got seven unemployed people. But they don't just stay I wish we had filthy here. I don't know about that. <laughs> I don't know about that. Maybe maybe that was women doing the fishing, Woody. Now, let's look, Woody, let's spend an hour, <laughs> 45 minutes going to so those on seven this people, they're not unemployed. <laughs> they just start building better huts and roads and they pave and, and do the next level of thing. The hope is that when truckers that. don't need to be truckers anymore, they, you know, they won't learn to code. That's stupid. You know, I, I, but what is there for them? Like, that's kind of the thing is like, eventually you will get to a critical mass of where all the jobs that they would normally be like, all right, well, uh, we'll break into somewhere, some other working class occupation. Oh, well, these are even more quickly automated than where we came from in trucking. Like if every truck was suddenly automated tomorrow, like that would destroy the working in part and the middle class. Like, so that's like, what, like one in 10 middle class workers or something like that. I don't know like if that. this like, is an answer or people, not, yeah. but one nice thing about trucking is they're old. Something like 60% of truckers are over 55. So you might take that stat and say that truckers will age out as they are phased out. You know, all most truckers have a job for as long as they want it, right? We're not going to replace them all in the next 15 years, but they're all going to be 70 in the next 15 years. All, right? But work with me. So, so that's kind of nice, but the... I don't know if that answers it on like an economic level. What are we going to do with no, people that would have been truckers? I have the answer. Yeah. Universal basic income is part A um, because there just aren't going to be enough jobs for everyone. Part two, I think that if you do have this robotic workforce, perhaps you can compete with the Chinas of the world in manufacturing once again, right? And you can start exporting robot labor because it can compete with what is essentially their slave labor. Maybe like, there's a construction parallel on that. It, it used to be that if you needed a basement in China, they'd have like 200 people with shovels. And if you needed a basement in Colorado, they'd have one dude with an excavator. Mm -hmm. And then eventually now China uses an excavator too. It turns out that a dude with an excavator is more cost efficient than 200 with shovels, even if they're paid like poor Chinese people or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, but maybe in manufacturing, if our robots get just a little better, then suddenly, hey, you know, our robots are cheaper than their inexpensive labor, and now we're competitive here. I think it's the only way you're going to compete with China is by winning the tech race and and going to that robotic workforce and paying our people a universal basic income, thereby perhaps freeing up at least some percentage of them for what I'm going to just call higher thinking, which maybe feeds back <laughs> into like, like, like 
I'm calling it higher thinking and I'm sp specifying some of them because mm -hmm. I know what I do if you give me a universal basic income and it, vol it involves a lot of weed <laughs> and a lot of television. Okay. But some people will be freed up to like explore their artistic side, right? Or their uh, creative side. Uh, if we actually want to make some yes. money off all of the it. blue checks on Cloud Twitter, need to go to their ivory That's towers great. and agree. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, well, what, about, hey, what if we just make more things illegal? Then we need way more police, and we could pay all the truckers to police <laughs> each other. Just put sirens on those big rigs. Yeah, I like this. I mean, you know, <laughs> food delivery <laughs> will shut down immediately. Cataclysmic. Uh, intimidating. Uh, Maybe you get pulled over by a big rig. <laughs> stop the 30 people get out oh, pulling over would be really voluntary though and if he wants to lock you up he's got like a whole row of cells in the back of that thing i feel like i could outrun a big rig in my f-150 not these ones they're souped up with no wood. These, these are the elon musk electro uh, uh ones yeah this I'll this thing's got more horsepower for 45 than... minutes straight <laughs> to get away i think with those like you know we always talk about how inefficient um solar panels are on cars right Slightly more size. efficient if the whole roof of a semi truck is a is a solar panel, right? Like I mean, I'm I'm talking out of my ass, but right? but like but it's literally more surface area by by it, quite a bit. It's a question of the scaling, right? Because you know, I'm assuming the battery is that much larger too. And Huge, got to be massive, right? Yeah. So I don't. Do we? Is it, it better be, or worse? It could be know. for like permanent fuel because like like you're driving all over the country. There's going to be clouds a pretty significant portion of the time, or it'll be nighttime. Right. Sure, sure. Oh. All those things are true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I was, I was just ma making a little bit of pontification there about the fact that the surface area is bigger. Well, we, we also need we those... ship everything in much smaller trucks. Now they need more drivers. That's the old argument about like Golf the carts. guys who are digging the holes. You just give them smaller shovels, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Until after a while, everybody's got a teaspoon, and you've got a huge workforce. Yeah, nobody's unemployed, but everybody's poor as shit, kind of like the Soviet Union. We studied this, in, and so I had some business courses in college, and uh, it used to be this. It used to be that ditch diggers were responsible for supplying their own shovels. And uh, this guy did a study, I forget his name, maybe Frederick Taylor, and basically he discovered this. We should give these guys shovels. And initially, the businesses were like, fuck off. Like, I'm not going to give this guy a shovel. They're like, no, 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 no. These assholes, they don't have good shovels. They, they've got, like, dirt shovels and they're shoveling coal. They've got coal shovels and they're shoveling dirt. And if we give them the shovel for the material, then they'll be more efficient. And it'll make up for whatever you spend in shovels, you'll make your money back. And it turned out to be true. And it's a big part of why people are given the supplies to do their work now. You know, if you're a computer programmer, they give you your computer. Because if every asshole buys their own, then you, they bare suck, minimum. they bare minimum, etc. I can do it on my phone, don't worry. Coal shovels are great big things, because I guess coal's fluffy and light compared to like dirt that has to like poke and it's a different kind of shovel now mulch pitchfork would be something different still so now businesses that, give them the right tool and they work that better. made me think of a meme i saw like over the weekend it was like it was that big fat woman who's like talking to her like TikTok or something and she's like this guy said that i was too big for him and i'd let him know that obviously he didn't have the right equipment to please a woman like me so i was going to find a man who had the right set of equipment and then it immediately cuts to this guy. He's like, this is the John Deere 85,000. <laughs> it has a, a front end loader bucket capable of hauling 50 tons in one scoop. It is wider than the house. <laughs> it is deeper than a whale. <laughs> uh, it's, like, it's the biggest tractor I've ever seen in my life. I literally didn't. I've watched like, those Discovery Channel shows where they show off like massive machines, and I'd still never seen a tractor this fucking big. I was just dying laughing. <laughs> I wish I, I, you have a tractor curious now. <laughs> I, I'll see if I can find it. It's it, it's industrial Probably machinery. Probably not really the John Deere eighty five thousand. No, it wasn't a John Deere eighty five thousand. It was it was um, it was that color they paint bulldozers that pale yellow, and yeah. it was it looked like I. I I got, I'll see if I can find like the exact video because it was fucking hilarious. That is funny. Now I, 
You know how I, you said something the other day. You like you know you watch a guy one time and YouTube like, suddenly thinks you're infatuated with him and you want ten thousand more suggestions from that guy. Yeah. Uh, not currently, but I had been there with tractors before, and YouTube was always like, <laughs> I know you like plowing videos. It's like, yeah, I do. <laughs> yeah, so, I guess I'll watch another one. I guess I'll watch another one of this guy LARPing as an 18th century frontiersman cooking hard tack. Like, I, on a, like he's going to go on a pretend sea voyage. <laughs> and I love it. And they're right to suggest it to me. I watch a lot of it. I like machines working. Our house fell behind on laundry, and I typically don't do the laundry in our house. And by doing the laundry, I mean pushing it through the washer and dryer. And uh, it had just fallen so far behind. I'm like, I don't even think I need to buy more shirts. I think I just have 19 of them waiting to be washed. <laughs> so I just... I like making machines work. I always have. I've liked defragging a hard drive on the computer. Ever see that with the graphics where it makes it think it's doing something? I, I like mowing the yard because it just fucking put that thing in full throttle. And it's, 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 it's doing a lot of work, right? Just like work. The scientific media, like the, the force, the, 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 the distance, like it's working. And uh Suddenly, I got into like washing and drying clothes, and I'm like, oh, oh, oh. I, I have like fifteen. I have fifteen cubic yards of clothing to wash, <laughs> and I just like, like I'm fucking it, like bench pressing in the. It's been an hour and fifteen minutes since I pushed clothes through. Take a break. Put that shit through our washer and dryer. <laughs> There's no more clothing to wash. Our whole house is done. There's like three lonely socks. I'm like, I can't do this in a load by itself. But yeah, I, I got our what? Jack. <laughs> like, so tell me when, when when you would put it in to the machine. How long did you stand there and kind of enjoy the thrumming of it, the the view of it? Hopefully, you have a clear top. You can I see do have a clear the top, just like you're thinking. And uh, the the dryer is front loaded, and the washers. It's a top loaded, like European style. So it doesn't have an agitator, but it is top loaded. Yeah, Harry. Harry is yeah European style. Oh, oh Jesus. Anyway, uh, yeah, yeah. So I, I, I watch it. I make sure it's going. I make sure both machines are going. I, I look at how much time they have and S, you know, like take note of, of when I need to return so that we don't get too much downtime. And sometimes the dryer needs to run twice because it's electric and it's shit. So uh, now, now I have strong opinions on dryers. I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what were you thinking when you got this one? Clearly the fucking amp. So, yeah. So I, dude, I am a washing machine now. They just like if if three loads get backed up and they take an hour and fifteen minutes to go, it will take me like three hours and fifty minutes. Like there's, I'm just on it. That shit is always working, always churning. I, I am, I'm the wash guy. So you now. got yourself into washing? Yeah. And drying oh, because I like it when machines do work. On the meanwhile, in the living room, clean clothes were piling up, and I'm like, <laughs> baby. The laundry team's beating the folding team here. I think you guys yeah. got to spring into action. And she did. Hope and Jackie, they, they just, they fold everything. And I'm like, oh, you're out of folding. Challenge accepted. You show up this time tomorrow, I'll have six loads for you. <laughs> <laughs> that's <a> promise. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I that, just... That I think, dude, like... Dude, like... You can get into, Woody, where you can... Where you run out of clothes, you can simulate washing clothes and, like... <laughs> Dude, kind of computer environment. I'll, I'll be like sleepy in bed, but not having fallen asleep yet. I'm like, you know, I can push one more load through and have it work while I'm asleep. Right, here's, the, here's, the, here's the Roblox laundry uh, simulator. You should download that. Is, this a game? You can, is there any way you can gamify the folding process? Because that's the worst. Part. Is there like a machine you can have that? folds t-shirts like from a factory like is there any way you can get your hands on an industrial clothes folding machine so you can work that into your uh, assembly line <laughs> i i have seen those like automated folding machines but yeah they look so expensive i didn't even price them out they just look it's your like birthday yeah touche Intriguing. yeah <laughs> have you seen those things they use at macy's where they like lay a shirt on it and then you just flip it like a book closed and it that sounds on. like what I saw, uh, but it it just looked like it would cost eighteen grand or something, like like too much. 
but it oh definitely what i'm talking about is not 18 grand it's like a foldable thing you lay a shirt on and you just fold it across the hinges and it folds it for you what you fold it with your hands with your hands yeah. what are we yeah. peasants over yeah. here <laughs> <laughs> no. Are you gonna go work at a Ramada? What do you need this functionality I, for? You I mean, go Taylor, we got 15 cubic yards of laundry to fold. <laughs> 15 cubic yards. You're like, Colin, play out in the yard. No more in the mud puddle. Oh, new clothes. New you clothes. should have seen it. We had laundry baskets stacked as tall as people in front of the fireplace, just like just waiting to get folded. We had some tall catching up to do until the woodman took over. <laughs> Quite the week. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just charity laundry. Uh, you need one of those, like suits where the arms. There's like five two dummies on both sides of you where the arms all move together. <laughs> multiple shirts at the same time. <laughs> in some way, you know. <laughs> you strap in my Iron Man suit. <laughs> see, next thing we see is like the doors of Shark Tank opening, and you're walking with seven, <laughs> <laughs> seven <laughs> oppressed. <laughs> okay, you, no, it's not five woodies. You see, in front of, I think, yeah. I think that people, I think the QVC viewers are gonna love this. Five. I know. <laughs> you can do anything. You can make ten stir fries at once. You can make anything you can do with your hands don't think no, no, no. applications <laughs> are limited <laughs> oh, a, a gang of toughs are coming at you at the end of the night you're alone or are you no every punch is seven you're, you're clearing away <laughs> <laughs> suddenly I'm standing behind the couch with this innocent looking blonde girl and me and my seven <laughs> 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 are you ready to get woodied <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah see this is this is a good idea <laughs> this is the life changing technology All right, the biggest downside is you have to walk horizontally through houses and play <laughs> with alleys and corridors turns doorways uh, yeah you know it's going to be a world changing technology that comes out that was your original crush question right woody yeah. like imagine the last oh yeah a la imagine the last generation that is going to die like, and then they invent the life prolonging one, right? And you're like, oh, well, sucks to be you guys, I guess, but we're just going to go. Ahead we're I don't think there will account. be a last generation. I think there will be poor. I think it'll be expensive. I think oh. it'll be, I think it'll be some Gattaca shit where like there was, there, there's this like fall off between when it, when like people started getting it and, and didn't, and it was all based on income. And I, you know, maybe like, like, oh yeah, did you, did, how high did you score on your your test? I got an eighty seven. I got to get a ninety percentile to get the life extending formula, though. I don't know. I'm gonna I'm gonna go hit the books again, I guess. That yeah, right. wow, right? Like, and and how will it work? I think a lot of people have this idea that like, you just stop aging, but maybe they'll just reverse aging. Like like I don't know what it is exactly. I've seen it's different cellular, studies. It, it, it's like the it's cellular breakdown. It's like this, the DNA like uh, replicating itself, and every time it replicates itself, it's a <laughs> shittier copy. It's it's a little bit that, more flawed. That's hard to reverse. I read some. I, I, I'm not smart enough to explain this, but like something was shortening, some sort of cell or compound was shortening, and they can length it again. And they've done it in mice. They say I, and I'm like, fuck, that's literally literally reversing aging. Like people just what I. I bet people look fucked up when they do it. Like, you know, like it, ever see someone get a bad plastic surgery and then they age in this alternative plastic surgery thing where their smile and eyes are fucked up. I bet that's what yeah. age reversing is like. Well, he looks younger, but he doesn't look right. He looks all yeah. smooth, weird. Yeah. Remember like the guy at the end, like like um the, the billionaire or the trillionaire in Prometheus, the one who's like going to the other place. Oh shit. You but I'm listening. I'm just trying to explain it. Uh he looks awful. He looks he, like he's like 120 or something like that. Sick. And and yeah. he just he's just like he just let me see if I can find an image of him. See, it's I want him to be a terrible looking spry 120 year old. Like I know I look like hell, but my bones are dense and my muscles are strong, and I kind of like to run up the stairs a lot i don't want to look okay too i don't want to just become ghoulish over time like if you get oh. to 150 you're officially like you're not even going to look human anymore you're what i want to like, oh. do is just bounce back and forth go from 18 to i was about to say 48 but what the fuck am i thinking go from 18 to 28 and then just keep ricocheting back and forth 
Well, by that point, they'll have like mind transfer technology. So if you're like a wealthy billionaire, you can purchase like, you know, two Olympic swimmers had a baby and while that's still a baby, you can pay to have your consciousness transferred into the child. Imagine and then how you can you be kick like, ass at school. Like, I'm sure yeah. you could already spell better than me at first grade, but you couldn't spell better than you at first grade. You just go back and spelling be everyone. That's true. You just have a whole, like, age of kids where it's like a five-year-old, like, horny hitting on another five-year-old where it's like, no, dude, you can't be doing this. Like, she's actually five. You're technically, <laughs> like, 130. You can't be, like, pulling your little princess dick out at her. Like, you, you can't. I mean, technically, ah, the rules have changed yeah. in the future. <laughs> what Honestly, is this? I don't know. <laughs> What's the consequence? A timeout? I don't know. Like, <laughs> a spanking? Thank you.